All right, welcome to Concept C. We're going to be talking about and building on um, yesterday's concept. Um, we're going to be working at when alkyl and halide groups are attached to a hydrocarbon. All right, um, I'm going to go through the different steps, and you just have the steps. You don't actually have the example with it. So you might want to, on the side, include this example so you can have a visual with each one of those rules. Um, if not, just at least try and pay attention and pick up on each part of the name that we're going to come up with at the very end. So first, every time when we go to do these, you're always going to need to find the number of carbons in the longest continuous unbroken chain. So here we have our five carbons. I also could have circled these five carbons. Um, it would have been the same thing and we would get the same answer. I just find it a little bit easier to look straight across. So five carbons, all single bonds, is where pentane comes in. Um, I'm then going to determine the direction for numbering, very similar to what we did yesterday with alkenes and alkynes. Um, my functional group is attached to the second carbon. If I would have numbered from the left, it would have landed on the fourth carbon, which is incorrect. So we want to keep it with the lowest possible number. So that means this carbon, or this, um, what we're going to call methyl group, and we're going to learn about what methyl is in a little bit, is attached to my second carbon. Alright, um, the position of any alkyl group is considered next, so that's why we're looking at the CH3. Um, and again, it's attached to my second carbon, so that's where the 2-methyl pentane comes in. However, we're not done because we have a, a bromine group that we're going to need, or element, that we need to label and include in our name. So how we're going to do that, first off, if we were to have more than one, um, we would have to use the prefixes di, tri, tetra, and so on. And we will commonly use those if needed. Um, and also, we always want to make sure that we place our different groups uh, in alphabetical order. So if we have both an ethyl and a methyl group, we're going to put the one with the E in before the one with the M, and so on. So just something to keep in mind when we're writing these names. All right, getting back to our structure, we had to take care of the bromine. Um, we're going to talk about why we're calling it bromo in just a little bit. Um, but again, I have the number signifying what carbon it's placed on, the three, and then that we have one bromo. And again, bromo is coming first in this name because B comes before M. So that's why we end up with the name 3-bromo-2-methylpentane. Okay, so every part of that name has an important piece to... Um, our compound, so it's going to be very important that you pay attention to each part of those. All right, and we have a returning guest that would like to say a few words of other important information related to this. Always place commas between numbers and dashes between a number and a letter. All right, so something that you're going to see carried throughout each of these slides, so something to keep in mind um, and stay consistent whenever writing the names. All right, um, we are going to be looking at something called an alkyl group, and this is um, referred to as kind of a branch hydrocarbon molecule where we're going to have these extra uh, molecule fragments bonded to our hydrocarbon chain, and we're going to be using the suffix or ending YL. So here are three common groups, and obviously we can have more carbons than what we're showing um, past propyl. However, we only need to really worry about methyl, ethyl, and propyl. And this corresponds to how many carbons are attached to this branched hydrocarbon. So as you can tell, the prefix are staying the same as when we talked about alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. Um, if we have just one carbon, so CH3 attached to a chain, we're going to refer to as methyl, two carbons is ethyl, and then three carbons is propyl. And you'll see some examples of that. All right, so let's actually go and start from our name and build what compound um, we have present. So we're going to start with always our carbon chain, and we're going to find that by the very end of the compound. So here we have pentane, and remember pent is representing five carbons. So I've shown that in a chain. I then can go ahead um, and realize that they're all single bonds from the A and E ending, so I can just leave what I have on my screen so far. All right, um, I need to number the carbons. Um, you, don't, you don't have to put numbers there. I like to always write them when I'm drawing this in so that I can keep all the information clear. Um, my second carbon, I have 2-ethyl. Ethyl contains two carbons as a side chain, so that's why I have my two carbons with the appropriate number of hydrogens attached. And then my last part is the 3-methyl group. On the third carbon, um, I'm going to have one CH3 group attached, so one carbon, which is where the METH comes from. Okay, so I have my pentane, my 2-ethyl, and my 3-methyl, and that gives me my entire compound. 
Um, here we're going to work backwards. We're going to be giving, I'm giving you the formula, or the structural formula, and I'm asking for the name. You have to find the longest chain, which I can either find that way or straight across. So just realize that your longest continuous chain can actually go in many directions. Um, so you always, always have to double check for that. All right, let's move on. So our four carbons indicates that we have butane. And then moving and developing the rest of our compound, we're going to see that on our second carbon, and remember I'm counting from the right because it puts the lowest number on these two substituted groups. Um, so it's going to be just, again, a detail that you need to pay attention to. On the second carbon, I have two methyl groups. We do not ever refer to these two separate methyl groups as ethyl. Okay, these are two very specific methyl groups separate from each other. So just something to take note of. You might want to even write next to there, not ethyl, because um, that can definitely be something that um, some students. All right, and then what we're going to do is show that both of these methyls are on the second carbon. So we have two comma two, so we use commas between the numbers, dash, so between a number and a letter, dimethylbutane. And I'm using the prefix di to indicate, again, my two methyl groups. All right, and now looking at our last one in this section, 5-propyl um, nonane, I have the nine carbons that NON prefix indicates. I am then going to, on my fifth carbon, show a propyl group. So I have my three carbons, which is indicated by the prop, and then with the correct number of hydrogens attached. All right, so let's look at when a halogen has been bonded um, or substituted into a hydrocarbon chain. Um, here we're going to be using these names. This is on your reference table. You do not need to memorize fluoro, chloro, bromo, or iodo. These are on your chart. However, we're going to be using them throughout, so I would make sure you take that out as a reminder to yourself of where to find them. All right, our first example is chloromethane. Um, methane is telling me that I have one carbon, and then chloro is telling me I just have one Cl attached. And then again, very importantly, you need to fill in the hydrogens accordingly around the carbon so they have that special four bonds. All right, here I'm again, I'm working from my structural formula to my name. I have to find and determine my number of carbons, which I have two of. So that's going to provide ethane. Um, I'm then going to number them. I'm picking and putting one on this carbon on the right because it has two of the groups attached to it, unlike the one on the carbon on the left. I'm then going to look at that I have two bromines and one fluorine. Now, bromine comes before fluorine, so just keep that in mind. Um, that's why I'm going to put bromo in front. I'm showing that I have it on the first and second carbon. So this bromo is on the first carbon, this bromo is on the second carbon. And then I'm using the dye to show that I have two of the bromines. And then finally, I need to show fluorine which again is on the first carbon attached, so I have one fluoro. So here I have one, two, dibromo, one fluoroethane. So that big name gives us this small compound, but by having that name, I can always draw this correctly. Um, and again, just take notice, I have commas between numbers and dashes between any letters and numbers. All right, um, one, two, difluoroethane. Start with ethane with two carbons. I'm then going to add in my two fluorines, which are on two separate carbons, which I'm deciding to place both of them above. And then I'm going to correctly fill in the rest of my hydrogens. All right. And then finally, I'm looking at writing the name for this. Again, as I've been saying for these past few examples, that I'm looking at my chain of carbon. So I have three, which is going to give me propane. I'm then going to look at my two groups. I have two chlorines, so I'm going to have a dichloro, and they are on the first and third carbons. So I show that with my one, three dichloropropane. All right, I know that was a lot of information, but we are going to practice this a lot tomorrow. But hopefully you've been able to pick up on some of the key things that are going to carry through. And you did a wonderful job, and I will see you tomorrow.